Hey guys, it's Lori. So today I want to talk about something kind of crazy and I might be all over the place, but just bear with me, okay? So most of you have heard about Lori Vallow, Daybell, um, and Chad Daybell. Uh, if you haven't, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because there's a million and one channels out there that um, have covered the, the story. All you got to do is Google it. It'll come all right up. But basically, in a nutshell, these people were LDS, Latter-day Saints, Mormons. Um, and the, I, don't get me wrong. I'm, start, I'm saying that because it's factual, um, not because I have anything against any particular religion. But it goes to my point, okay? So I just want to go over real quickly uh, Lori Vallow. Uh, what I know about Chad Daybell um, is that he... Um, he was LDS when he was really young. He was a uh, grave digger. He worked in a cemetery for a while. He wrote a book about that. He wrote a couple books about that, I think. And I think what he did is he wrote several books, and then um, maybe he was having a hard time getting them published or whatever, but he and his wife, Tammy, started a publishing company. And what they would do is they would publish his books and... Uh, books, you know, along the same lines. Now, it started out with books about... Uh, grave digging, digging and stuff like that and then it went on to um, uh, spiritual books and he claimed that he would get messages and um, you know different things to, um, and he wrote about his visions I guess he had near-death experiences all that kind of stuff so they would do like um, uh, he was a publishing company he and his wife Tammy and then uh, they did, like, you know, he would go around and talk and stuff like that. And there were some organizations that he was part of and that kind of thing. And then Lori Vallow was, um, just a quick synopsis, she was married five times. Chad, she did end up marrying Chad Daybell. He's her fifth husband. They have not been married that long. They got married November 2019. Um... Her first husband, I guess, was right out of high school or something like that. Didn't last long. They had no children, whatever. Second husband, she had a son. Um, what was his name? Uh, Colby. He's grown, married, has a, way, a child, you know, a life of his own. Um, they divorced. Then she married. Um, no, 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 no. Is the second? I don't know if she had the second, if she had the son. I don't know. But anyway, she had Colby. I don't know if that was the second husband or not. I don't know what happened to him. Um, he obviously took off because the third husband, um, uh, Ryan, something Ryan, I can't remember his first name, but he, they, she and he had a daughter together, Ty Lee, and he had also adopted Colby. And then they divorced. Her fourth husband, Charles, I think they were married for like, quite a while, like 17 years or something, um, he, um, he and she had no biological children, but they adopted his, I believe it was his nephew, or maybe great nephew, something like that, yeah, I think it was his sister's grandson, um, JJ, he was seven years old when all this took place, and then, um, her and Charles were in the, I don't know if they were actually, I think they were in the process of a divorce, or had recently been divorced when Charles died, Charles was shot by Lori's hus um, Lori's brother, um, Alex Cox, uh, who later died, uh, um, he also, he also died as well. I think he died in December. But anyway, okay, so Tammy Daybell, Chad's wife, you remember the publishing company? Okay, so she died in October. In her sleep, Chad said that she wasn't feeling well. She had like a cough or a cold or something, and she went to bed and never woke up. Um, Lori's uh, third husband, Tylee's dad, he died of a heart attack a while back. Um, Charles, her fourth husband, who they had been going through some crazy stuff in the divorce, he had actually put out, like, um, I don't know what they call it, but when you ask to get your partner, like, picked up, um, involuntarily reviewed psychologically, um, a whole big mess. She, he went on some kind of business trip. She canceled his, uh, 
flight back without telling him. She took his truck from the <coughs> airport, excuse me. Um, she took $35,000, I think it was, out of their business account, and he couldn't make payroll that week. He went to the cops. He told them all this. She was act she was telling him that he was no longer Charles, that um, she thought he was, I can't remember the guy's name, but she thought that some other spirit had taken over him and he was no longer Charles and she's talking all this stuff and he said he was worried about the kids and blah 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 I wish the cops would have taken him a little more seriously fast forward and um, they had split up they were living in separate places I think they lived in Idaho at this time I could be wrong but then she moved to Arizona he came to get JJ one day the seven-year-old that was adopted now so Charles sister Kay and her husband Larry are the grandparents of JJ. Their daughter or son, nobody really knows. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody knows. I don't know. I don't know if it was their son or daughter, but anyway, had a drug problem, had this child, couldn't take care of him. So Kay and Larry were taking care of him. They decided that they were a little too old to keep up. So Charles and Lori decided to adopt. They were younger. They were more active. They were able to. They all got along fine. Kay and Larry still saw him all the time. It was all good. Everything was good. I don't know how old JJ was when Lori and um, Charles adopted him. But anyway, now all of a sudden, Charles is not Charles. He's been taken over by somebody, and Lori's, like, flipping out. Lori also thinks she is a god, and she's here to... Um, uh, like a lead, the 144,000, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, um, Alex kills Charles when he goes to get JJ, claims the self defense. If you watch the video of Lori and Ty Lee, who is 16 or 17 at the time, they seem unaffected. They seem, they're actually laughing and joking when the cops question them about Charles. Now, Charles was Ty Lee's stepdad. And I know there are a lot of, you know, fighting and tension, you know, between Lori and Charles over Tylee, which it's normal stuff, you know. Um, she also, according to news, whatever, um, uh, the, the second, no, the third husband, whatever, the one... Yeah, the third husband, the, Tylee's dad, when he adopted Colby, there was talk of uh, sexual abuse and that kind of thing. He denied it. Um, a lot of people think Lori just kind of convinced Colby that he was, but who knows? Who knows, right? Um, anyhow, so now Charles is dead. Um, Lori moves to Idaho. Come to find out, that's well, that's where Chad lives with his wife. Um, and this is in, I think it's September... No, it, I think she, either August or September. Anyway, shortly after that, um, uh, Ty Lee goes missing in, in early September. Later September, uh, JJ is taken out of school. Lori says she's going to homeschool. Nobody sees him again. So now both kids are missing. Um, Tammy Daybell, Chad's wife, dies in October in her sleep. Less than a month later, it was a couple weeks later, November, what date did they get married? They got married, I think, 11, November 5th or something. Chad and Lori get married. And they go off to Hawaii. Kids are gone. They go off to Hawaii. Um, now, Kay and Larry are unaware of the marriage thus far, but they go in, I, I don't know, I think it was in November when they, um, they, uh, you know, call the police and say, could you do a well check and find out if JJ's okay, if Lori's okay, we haven't heard anything. And it uh, turns out that Lori, you know, the last the last text that Kay received f from Lori was after Charles' death because she thought she was going to get the life insurance, but Charles had changed it. So she was all pissed off at Kay because Kay got the money, blah, 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 just this whole mess, right? Well... Okay, so now, fast forward, Lori gets arrested in February because the police are trying to find out where are the kids, where are the kids, where are the kids. She claimed back in November, she told the cops that they were with a friend in Arizona, who was Melanie Gibb, by the way, who will come into the story. Um, and Melanie doesn't have them. She says, I'm not going to lie for you. Um, so anyway, Lori gets arrested in February in Hawaii, and they bring her back to um, Idaho, 
for um, uh, child abandonment. Let me see. Child abandonment, contempt of court, obst obstructing an investigation. Uh, she's been in jail in a county in Idaho since February. Originally in Hawaii, her bail was $10 million. When she got to Idaho, they reduced it to $1 million. She could have got bond on that because when you get a, it wasn't $1 million cash. It was $1 million cash assurity. Um, uh, Chad, who is now her new husband, they've been married since November, tried to get her out. They went and they met with uh, um, <clears throat> uh, bail bondsmen. But the bail bondsmen simply said, we're not going to tell, but tell us where the kids are because we need to know. If we're going to risk getting you out, we need to know that you're not going to take off somewhere. So just tell us where the kids are. Your secret's safe with us, and we will take care of your bond. No go. So she's been sitting there ever since. Okay, fast forward to June. Um, the police have already uh, had a search warrant inside uh, Chad's home at one point because his wife, Tammy, there was no suspicion, nothing at the time of her death. But then, um, and there was no autopsy because the family decided no autopsy. Um, but then when Lori's kids went missing and all this stuff got, you know, all suspicious, well, all of a sudden they reopened it. They exhumed her body, I believe in Jan excuse me, January, and there have not been any autopsy results thus far. So they searched the house once then. I think there weren't only covered, and I'm not sure, I'm not 100%, you can look it up, but I think it only covered like computers on the inside, maybe the outside a little bit, but they were really focused more on Tammy's death rather than the kids, I believe. Could be wrong. Um... Because there are some channels that cover this that I really dislike because they seem to me like more like gossip channels rather than true crime. I love true crime, as you know. I've worked on many cases. That's my incense. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> and I love that genre, but so many people to me seem like gossips, and I don't like them. They, they're huge channels, but I just don't like the vibe I get. As you know, I go by vibes, right? Okay. So, fast forward just to a few days ago, and you probably already know all this. I'm just going over it real quick for those that don't. Um, Chad's uh, property was searched again, and it was, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew. Some people say Lori, you know, ratted him out. I also heard rumors that in the jail, I mean, some people are saying Lori was out there showing them exactly where. Maybe, but I don't think so. I also heard rumors that she was in jail, like, flipping out, tearing the pot apart when she found out Chad was arrested. Chad watched them do this from down the road, and when they he saw them, I don't know, dig something up, he tried to take off, but they caught him. They So they, they arrested him a couple miles down the road from his house. So now they're in two separate counties, both in Idaho. He's got a, he went to uh, court, I think it was last Monday or something, uh, not yesterday, but last week, and he's got a million dollar bond too. I don't know if that's a million cash or if that's a million cash or a surety. If it's cash or a surety, he may be able to bond out. I'm not sure yet. I, I don't know. I, it's, we're dealing with the same bail bondsman unless his kids like go out of the area. To, I don't know. But he may be able to because if it's cash or a surety, I believe he only needs $100,000 and I think he has that. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Um... The coroner's report did come back that it's the two kids that were in his yard. So I don't know if more charges, obviously more charges will be delivered later. I think they're just trying to make sure they have all their ducks in a row so that they don't mess this up. But as it stands now, Lori's got child abandonment, contempt of court, solicitation of a crime, obstructing an investigation. Chad is in jail on concealment and destruction of evidence. That's where it stands, okay? Okay. Now, I want to talk a little bit further about the spiritual side of this. That's the part where, and I know I've already taken up 15 minutes. I hate, that's why I talk so fast. I, like, I don't want this video to be an hour long. But what I have to say, I think, is very, very important. And my next video, I, you know, it's been on my heart, on my heart, on my heart to make these videos. They're very important spiritually. I've been in the middle of a spiritual battle. This one, a little bit, but... The next one, I've been putting it off because I really don't 
know exactly where to go or how to start it or, how, you know, so stay tuned for that. But um, most of you that know me know that all my life, I've kind of had one foot in this world and one foot in the other, you know? I, and I was born that way, so I don't know what it's like not to be that way, okay? So many people I have heard say, you know, Lori was a great person, she was a blah, 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 um, prior to all this. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but you probably figured it out already. Lori and Chad, it's come to light, have been having this affair before Charles died, before Tammy died, God only knows, maybe a year before or something, um, they were definitely involved in an affair. And I got to tell you, in the quote-unquote spiritual world, and I don't care if you're, L I'm not Mormon, um, but I don't care if you are Mormon or, and I don't know that much about them, I really shouldn't speak on that. What I do know about is what I've experienced. I've studied all, all kinds of religion. I was raised in the Catholic Church. Um, then I got deep into the New Age movement. And then I came out of that and kind of went floundering for a while. And um, I'm really no denomination now. Uh, but I am, you know, I am a Christian. But... Um, what I can tell you is that in different walks of life, and obviously it happened in the LDS church, but they're not the only ones. Um, there are many who prey upon your spiritual nature to use to their own advantage, okay? So some people are saying Lori was this great person and great mother and blah, blah, blah. And then there's other people who say Chad was this great person and you know, great dad, great husband, great person in general, <clears throat> great leader prior to all this. So where do we go from there? I'll be right back. Okay, so the next part of this video is really my experience, my opinions, that kind of thing. And it, it goes bigger than Lori and Chad and the kids and... Lord, you know, this is, the kids are gone. They've obviously been taken. Somebody killed them. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say it was probably Alex Cox, Lori's brother, who was also kind of her hitman. I mean, we've got Tammy dead. We've got Charles dead. We've got um, Lori's former husband before Charles is dead. Who knows if she had anything to do with that. Supposedly it was a heart attack. Who knows? Alex is dead. After a a marriage to this woman who is also part of this whole like sub sect okay and Melanie Gibb was Lori's best friend and it's still out there they had a podcast together um, there was another guy that was a former police officer so what they started out talking about was like a near, near death experience and then messages and it was really very new agey stuff uh, Melanie Gibb is still out she finally very interestingly, did an interview with um, the reporter f from Idaho who's really been covering this, and then very shortly after, the kids are discovered. So, in my opinion, and it's strictly my opinion, I think Melanie had something to do with them finding the kids. I think she knew a lot more than she claims to know. She, you know, a lot of people really liked her in the interviews and I watched the interviews and I liked her too but you know what this lady still believes all this stuff and she's she's pretending she doesn't but she was sucked in if you listen to her podcast with Lori they both believe the same things um I think she knew all along honestly I really do for at one point in the interview she talks about Lori telling her that JJ is now a zombie because Lori and Chad, obviously, Lori, I haven't really heard a lot about Chad um, saying this, but Lori was vocal about um, people turning into zombies. And basically what, it, what they believed was, so a spirit or a demonic spirit or a, obviously a spirit of another person because she thought Charles was somebody else, could come into your physical being 
and take over. And if that happened, that the spirit of that person, Tylee and JJ, or whomever else was taken over by zombies, um, would be kind of lost. They couldn't move forward spiritually. They couldn't go to paradise or whatever. They were only kind of, you know, lost until that body died. So I believe this is why, you know, they were killed, or at least that's the story. Um, people say that Lori was great ahead of time. People say that Chad was great ahead of time. I think both, you know, people are blaming this on Chad. I don't blame it on Chad. First of all, Lori was their mother, okay? It's also been rumored that she told somebody that um, JJ was the child of her drug-addicted niece. The way she, Who says that about their adopted child? Like that, you know? I don't know if that's true or not. That's hearsay. Um, also, um, Tylee, Tylee was extremely close to Lori. You can tell in the videos where they're together. You can tell that they're really close. Um, I believe that Alex believed wholeheartedly in what Lori would say spiritually. I do. I believe that. Now he's crossed over. I'm assuming he knows the truth now. But I do think he was like her hitman. Anyway, I think Lori is a narcissistic woman who was a chameleon and very good at playing the sweet, loving person. First of all, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not judging people that have been married several times. Um, I was married more than once. But I believe the way she went through husbands and the way she kind of discarded children. Colby says that um, Tylee's father didn't treat him well. Um, she claimed that Charles was abusive. And they were one thing we do know from Colby and from other people is that uh, Lori and Charles were always arguing over discipline over Tylee. I don't think Charles was mean to Tylee. The vibe I get from Charles is I think he was a decent man, but Lori had no problem telling everybody he was abusive. You know, people that go around and lie about their exes all the time or try to make them out to be monsters, I feel like she always put her kids second to her love life. I feel like she always came off like, oh, I'm wonderful, you know, but she was truly a narcissistic biatch that used people until she was done with them. That's what I feel about Lori. I don't feel like there's this sudden shift in her. Now, Kobe loves her. That's his mother. So, of course, he, you know, he sees her in a different light. But I think if you talk to people around her, you would see that she's always been narcissistic. Charles, probably the same thing. Together, they were horrible, obviously. Together, they became what, you know, now we've got the, at least this part of the story so far, right? So I don't blame it on Charles. I don't think Charles, you know, no, she fell for it. Okay, I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, and I can tell you something. I got hooked up in the new age BS too. And you know what? There's no way, no way somebody could tell me my kids are zombies. No, 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 no. No. Even if I thought by some bizarre chance that some spirit had entered my children. I would be doing spiritual work on them. I would be praying. I would not kill them. Okay? I'm just speaking for me. This is just my opinion. From here on out, this is all my opinion. Okay? I'm not taking responsibility away from Charles, um, Chad either. I'm not taking responsibility away from either one of them is what I'm saying. I hear people saying, you know, it's not Lori's fault, it's Chad's fault, it's not Chad's fault, it's Lori's... No, it's both their fault. Obviously, we don't know the facts yet. Julie Rowe is another player I haven't mentioned yet. If you ever watch Julie Rowe, you just gotta look her up. She claims to get visions. She was a good friend to Chad for a while. You can see her contradict herself over time. She's saying, where are Chad's friends? Why aren't they standing up for him? Then later on, she says, oh, we got into a blowout because I know that Chad's bad and blah, blah, blah. I think Julie Rowe is full of BS. Does she believe her own BS? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But there are many people in the quote-unquote spiritual community. This is, this is a great example of what I have been warning 
everybody about, everybody I talk to, all my clients, everybody about with discernment, okay? I remember back years ago, uh, I was really sick, okay? And believe it or not, back when I was younger, I think, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I was wonderful, but, you know, I got a lot, I got asked out a lot. We'll put it that way, okay? Lots changed since then, <laughs> but, um... I had a friend. I'll call her Gina. Okay, so me and Gina were really good friends. Um, she was a little bit older than me, whatever. She had, had a lot of boyfriends in her life. I never was really like that. So um, I was really sick. I went through a battle with, with some really life-threatening stuff. And um, she, was, she was dating this guy who was married, by the way. But he was a, a therapist, some kind of massage therapist, something. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe a chiropractor, something really into the, you know, hands-on healing, and uh, not Christian hands-on healing, uh, new age hands-on healing, and, um, you know, she was telling him all about me, and asking him, you know, if he could do anything for me, and he was all about, yeah, yeah, I'll meet her, whatever, so finally, we all get together, and we meet, and now, all of a sudden, his story changes, she comes to me, and she's like, look, I talked to, we'll call him Jim, I talked to Jim, and Jim said, that he can heal you 100%, but he needs to sleep with you. And I love you enough to allow you to sleep with him to be healed. And I was like, are you kidding? No, I'm all good. But this is the kind of stuff that is common. It's common. I was just talking to a younger client of mine who, you know, has a lot of these spiritual people in her life, and she was just saying that. She's like, it's, it's rampant. You know, she believes it's mostly men. I'm like, no, 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 women too, women too. Um, and it's, it goes beyond just that. I mean, some people, oh, there's so much deception. There is so much deception, so much deception. And it's not just sexually. This happened to be sexually, Lori and Chad, and, you know, they had the affair and all that stuff. And a lo many a marriage has broken apart because of this um, kind of thing. But it's not just marriages. I mean, you can be destroyed completely. Uh, look at, this came down to, like, lives being lost, you know. But marriages are destroyed. People, like, okay, for instance, you know, this whole... Um, law of attraction thing and believe me I know the law of attraction is real I know universal laws are real but if you take this stuff and you don't have God in the center and God being God who he is not who you want him to be but who he truly is see that's a lot of things too you hear all kinds of different stuff you know I have I have met the you know Buddhist and and Hindu and just new age in general, eclectic, uh, all different, all different walks, shapes, sizes. Um, I knew this woman once, okay? You know, I see in the comments, I see them all over the place, but what I'm trying to say is this is rampant. I see in the comments, comments of a lot of these videos, uh, people, and it, I know there's a good majority of people who, like, have no spiritual backing or, or whatever. They're like the normal people, right? Um, and they're saying, how could anybody fall for this and that kind of stuff? I want to say that, and you, or they'll say, like, it's religion. It's not just religion. It's not just religion. We are born with an innate longing for to know our creator, okay? So, so many people walk through their lives searching and searching and searching. Or maybe you don't even realize you're searching for something spiritual. You know, sometimes people have such an emptiness that they go through relationships or, you know, and we're searching, 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 searching. Everybody just wants love and appreciation and to know they belong and that, I mean, it's who we are as human beings, right? So you can get caught up in the stuff. People say, well, this is crazy. Well, let me tell you, it's everywhere. And I'm not going to go, I know I've been talking a long time, but um, I knew this woman once, Christine. And I'm using her real name because she's since crossed over. And I don't think, I mean, if you know her, you know her. But this was right here in New Hampshire. And this is when I had, um, I used to have a, a, a center. I had two 
um, healing centers. I had one in Manchester and one in Hanover, New Hampshire, which is in um, like the Dartmouth region up by Vermont. And we were doing great. I loved it up in Hanover. I had like two homes, you know, and that's like an hour and 20 minute drive. And I used to make it four times a week or five times a week, depending on what was going on. I had like a regulars that came. Oh, it was just a great place to be. And there was this woman, Christine, that would come. She wasn't like one of the regulars, but she would come often. And um, Christine was looking for more. I'm sure she had some kind of, she had a lot of physical ailments. She, I'm sure she had some um, psychological issues too. But anyway, um, so as time went on, um, Christine started calling herself um, Mary. She said that she was Mary, Mother Mary, Jesus' mother, incarnate. Okay, you might think, okay, well, she's just a little off, right? There, she had a whole group of people in western New Hampshire and a little bit, you know, of, of the eastern uh, Vermont that were following her and that believed as well. And so she thought she was Mary, and, you know, she had all these people who were, you know, Joseph or, or um, you know, James or uh, Peter, you know, all the apostles and everything. And I tried, you know, talking with her, working with her very gently. I didn't, you know, I wasn't mocking her at all. I knew she, tr excuse me, truly believed this. And then one day on my desk, she's like, I am bringing in the second coming. It's not Jesus, it's me, Mary, I'm going to do it. And she would sign, she started signing notes, Christine, Mary. And then over time it became Mary, Christine. And then eventually Christine was gone. Christine started losing people in her life that were close to her. They turned away from her. Um, a psychiatrist would just up in the medication. Um... But she had this whole, like, following. And I remember saying to her one time, uh, Christine, and she'd be like, no, Mary. I refused to call her Mary. I was like, Christine, I know you're still in there. What makes you think that if, you, if Mary truly were ushering the second coming rather than Jesus, which is totally not biblical, um, why would everybody be reincarnated in New Hampshire? I mean, we've got a whole world out here. What? Didn't she had an answer for everything? I remember one time she went in the hospital for something, and nobody went to see her. None of these so-called people. I remember her pointing out this like uh, Hanover's kind of like a wealthy town, and there was a a lawyer that had an office next to mine, and um, you know, real hoity-toity kind of guy. And he was a nice guy, but you know, she she points him out one day, and she tells me he's Jesus, in you know, incarnate but he just doesn't know it yet. She told me I was Melchizedek incarnate, incarnate, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I am Lori Romalo. I am nobody else but Lori Romalo. I've never been anybody else but Lori Romalo. Anyway, she got really mad at me for that. But I remember one time I went to the hospital, and, you know, nobody, I went. By this time, I had closed down my center, but I still went up to see her because nobody was there for her and um i think she had broken her leg or had surgery or something and we're sitting in the hospital and it was um a very small hospital up there not dartmouth it was a, a really small hospital and um kind of creepy <laughs> she was in the old part and it was really really quiet and we're sitting there talking and she goes do you hear that and i'm like hear what and I was trying to tell her, I was always trying to tell her the truth, bring her back to the truth, bring her back to the truth. And um, that's not what these other people did. These other people really believed that they were whoever, Peter, John, James, you know, whatever. How can, I don't know, anyway. Um, and I was like, hear what? She goes, it's happened. Satan has crossed over. He's one of ours now. And she's like, oh, hail Satan. I was like, no, 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 no. See how this happens? And it doesn't always happen that way. There are, and I know people think I'm crazy, but I know it to be true because I've experienced different levels of it. And this is just, you know, 
I wish I could do a live on this because look how long this video has already been and I haven't even touched the surface. But discernment is so important. And not only discernment, you got to have a solid foundation spiritually before you go out there seeking. You know, I've always told people just because somebody wrote a book just because they seem like they're a nice person, you will know them by their fruits. That doesn't mean they drive a nice car, they've got a nice house, they've got a million followers, whatever. That means you will know them by their fruits. Who are they as a person? What are they accomplishing spiritually? Are they bringing people to the truth? You know, so it's not about money. It's not about um, uh, nice on the outside, you know. It's about truly who they are. Just because somebody wrote a book or something doesn't make them telling the truth. And so many people, I remember telling that to one girl one time. And she thought I was just trying to, you know, make money off her and saying, don't, you know, don't do it on your own. You need somebody that you can trust, that you see their fruits are good, that you can go under. Okay? Somebody like Julie Rowe, her fruits are no good. Okay? She, something will happen and then she'll come out after that and go, well, I knew that. I saw that in vision. Um, yeah, it's been on the news. Melanie Gibb comes off as like a wonderful person. Now, I don't know Melanie Gibb, but I have heard her podcast, and I know that she was in the same boat as Lori, okay? I'm not saying she killed anybody, but I think she knew a heck of a lot more than she claims to have known. Christine ended up crossing over, and may she rest in peace. I, I really hope... I really hope that she came to the spiritual truth before she crossed over. I know that I have been taken advantage of. I have been sexually assaulted. <coughs> Sorry, that made me jump. It was my doggy. Um, I've been used. I've been abused. I've been wrong myself. I've done things that I shouldn't have done because I was fooled by a negative spirit. <sighs> Just use discernment, people. Please be careful. I mean, this case turned into, like, murder, but it doesn't have to be murder. It could be, you know, you, you screwed up your marriage. It could be, you know, you, you fell for somebody who's a total jerk. Um, it could be you've, you know, totally gone down the wrong road. I'm not taught. I know stuff happens, you know, just a, like non-spiritually stuff like that happens. But in the spiritual realm, and for all of us, whether you're into the spiritual stuff or not, there is there are angels and demons, and they are real. I'm not crazy, you know? I've lived this my whole life. And these spirits, you know, God will never intrude on your free will. Never. Never, never, never. These demonic spirits... They can't do what God can do, but they can whisper in your ear. They can make you feel a certain way. And what they do is they trick you into doing these things yourself. Okay? And there's many, many, many stories about this. Like I said, it's, this video has been too long already, and I've only scratched the surface. So if you're having some kind of battle or something, if you're feeling like, if you're, if you're hearing voices or, and I'm not talking about schizophrenia and delusions, I'm talking about spiritual stuff. If you're kind of in a spiritual battle, emotional battle, or if you just, you know what, reach out to, whether it be me or somebody else that you feel, you know them by their fruits, that you can trust them, please reach out, okay? You're not alone, all right? And I'm going to end the video here. I hope it helps somebody. And um, I am a spiritual coach. I don't know everything. I'm a seer as well. I, I mean, I'm going to get into that in a project that I'm working on um, where I screwed up and now I've come to see who I am. And I'm, I'm a seer. Um, I'm not going to call myself a prophet because prophets are never wrong. <laughs> and um, I have been wrong. Not spirit hasn't been wrong. Um, but I have been wrong and I have been fooled and... Um, it's a dangerous, dangerous arena. And I'm not saying not to be spiritual, but I'm saying to use discernment. But please, if you need help, whether it be me or someone else that you trust, please reach out. Please don't do this alone, okay? Especially now in the trying times that we're in. Um, reach out, okay? All right, guys. Uh, sorry for such a long video. I hope this helps somebody. And um, 
I'm going to stay posted on the whole Lori Vallow case and Chad Daybell case. And God bless those kids. I, ho I, I know they're resting in paradise now um, with the one true God, not all this BS that um, just stinks. It stinks that they, they have to be taken out this way. But um, anyhow, we'll keep you posted on that or, you know, keep me posted if you hear anything. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.